Tired of all those news, social media, politics, wars, just wanna have a good time playing video games and stuff, fighting over-sexualized evil robots in a retro-futuristic setting. Nice, right? No, no, not this time. This is gonna be another episode where we cancel things, and this one is about the game Atomic Heart and why you should never never buy it or play it or I don't know. Anyway. Atomic Heart is a first-person shooter that takes place in an alternative world, a world where the Soviet Union won World War II in two years and used its power not just to build gulag, prosecute gay people and use communist newspapers instead of toilet paper, but also to develop the robotic industry. Firstly, the Soviets used robots to achieve world domination, but later on the rise of machines happened, perhaps because even artificial intelligence can realize that the USSR was horse shit. So you as a KGB officer must find out why robots became uncontrolled and fight them using some fancy weapons and skills, although it is weird that a KGB officer has any other skill apart from torture techniques. Your goal is to restore peace, of course, Soviet-like peace, which doesn't make any sense. Just don't touch a controller and let evil robots take over this country. Couldn't be any worse. You can imagine where you really feel, really feel Soviet. Uh, it's a story like no other story. Ah, this smell of peaceful Soviet genocides and ethnic cleansing. For those of you who are familiar with video games, Atomic Heart sounds like another Bioshock-like FPS RPG, and to be fair, it is a good comparison game-wise. Because of that, Atomic Heart became one of the most expected games of 2023. But not all gamers, including us, share the same enthusiasm. Ukrainians and people who usually oppose genocides would rather play Pac-Man with their mouth and cat food than install Atomic Heart. And there are many deep reasons for that, but we'll start with the story. But what they've captured in the game is this feeling of being in, in the old Russia, which I love the old Soviet stuff we still have around. Man, you're always in the old Russia, no matter what year it is. The main character of Atomic Heart is a KGB agent Sergei Nichayev. It's him, and only him must be the good guy that will make the USSR great again. A good guy from the KGB is the most surrealistic thing you can possibly hear. It's like a child animator from SS. But the creators of Atomic Heart want you to sympathize him because he has a cute beard or something. I I don't know. It is just as if in Wolfenstein you would not have played as an American with Polish Jewish roots, but as a current SS member who is trying to rescue the Third Reich. Such a fun plot twist, huh? If someone thinks that such a comparison is rough, you are wrong. The KGB is pure evil that for decades committed crimes, assassination and repressions all over the world, especially against Ukrainians and Jews. Although that's gonna be a great cosplay at Comic-Con, am I right? By the way, in real life we also have a person who has a lot in common with the main character of Atomic Heart. He's also a KGB officer who thinks the USSR downfall is the biggest tragedy of the 20th century and tries to rebuild it by invading the neighboring countries and killing hundreds of thousands of people. Guess who? Sure, it's just a coincidence that the Russian game dev company Monfish made a character who is awfully similar to the president of their country. Oh yeah, I didn't mention it yet, but of course, the company that created Atomic Heart is originally from Russia. After the Russian full-scale invasion of 2022, Monfish moved their office to Cyprus, but they still have the Russian workers and not only that. The company uses sons from Russian sinner who supports the Kremlin regime, the company is making Soviet-style parties in Moscow, and lying that they don't have a Russian studio. Most important, Monfish doesn't give a fuck about the war in Ukraine, they never condemned Russian invasion, and when somebody asks Monfish about it on Twitter, they call such people spammers and ban them. Recently, I tweeted at Russian developer Monfish, creators of the upcoming Atomic Heart, and asked why the devs had not said one word about Russia's actions against Ukraine. The developers promptly blocked me without a response. When the amount of questions about the Monfish stance on the topic exceeded the number of hammers and sickles in Atomic Heart, the company finally made a statement. Monfish said that they are a pro-peace organization against 
violence and blah blah blah. A classic example of a statement from cowards who are afraid to tell the truth and being cancelled. The reason for such behavior is plain and simple. Monfish is not just tied with Russian pro-government organizations, but they are doing shibari with them. Investors of this game are Russian oligarchs. They're not just regular people. Atomic Heart is made with money from three investors, Tencent, Gaijin and GEM. We should look closer at the last two of them. Gaijin is another game development company created and ruled by Russians. They are mostly famous for their game War Thunder. Coincidentally, almost every game made by Russians is about war. Even if they made Sims, there would be an option to rape and torture your neighbor. In 2021, Gaijin got into a scandal when they made an ad integration on a YouTube channel which was directly supporting the so-called DP are the terroristic proxy organization backed by Russia that occupied the east of Ukraine, killed and tortured thousands of people along with the Russian army. To understand how bad the situation is, just imagine if EA Sports would advertise FIFA 24 on an ISIS video where they are playing football with the head of a prisoner. However, it appears that Gaijin Entertainment purchased more than standard ads designed to play at designated intervals throughout the video. The Cypress-based publisher also appears to have engaged in full ad integration with the YouTube channel's content. Another sponsor of Atomic Heart is GEM Capital. This company specializes in investments and is ruled by a Russian citizen Anatoly Pali. He was the top manager of Gazprom, Russian state energy company, and was also affiliated with the Russian state VTB ban and the biggest Russian petrochemical holding Sibur. In Russia, companies like these are technically private but in fact are totally controlled by the government and usually serve as wallets of Russian authorities. So if GEM Capital spent some of that money on Atomic Heart, they probably received approval from Russian bosses and that was a political act. It doesn't work in another way. That means, if you play something Russian, it means that Russia is playing you. As a result, we have a game that is made using money from a company that supports terrorists and a company that operates the money of Russian oligarchs. An oligarch is not just someone who's rich. It's also a person with political ties and influence. You thought that was it? Nah. There are more of Monfish shitty partners on the way. In Russia and some ex-Soviet countries, Atomic Heart will be exclusively distributed through the VK Play platform. The head of this platform is Vladimir Kiryanka. He is the son of one of the Putin's main allies, Sergei Kiryanka, first deputy head of the administration of the president of the Russian Federation. Sounds like a tree of Cosa Nostra from some godfather in KGB meta world. They both are under US sanctions, but it doesn't bother Monfish or any of the game publishers in the West. Afterwards, money from the sales will directly go to the Russian state budget. Also, it will not be used for developing sexy robots in a fantasy Soviet past. In reality, Russians will spend it on rockets that will be launched toward Ukraine and destroy residential buildings, like this one in Dnipro just a week ago. You may say that this is nonsense, it's just a game. Here's an answer. Russia loves to use such tools as a soft power source. You can already see the results of it. Gamers who like Atomic Heart are starting to severely defend Russia. If Russia makes robots like this in real life, they can nuke Ukraine for all I care. Drunk face, sad face, hashtag Atomic Heart. The logic is simple. If someone interferes with Russia, it can hurt the release of the game that I was waiting for so long, so I must protect the Russians because they are made they made such a good game and for this reason they can be bad. People like this even admit that money from the game will finance the war against Ukraine, but they are completely okay with it. They are wishing to bomb Ukraine just to make sure Ukrainians won't disrupt them from playing Atomic Heart. I hold my Atomic Heart purchase money goes into a Russian missile development project that strikes an apartment complex in Odessa. Heart emoji. But when some kids from image boards get fooled by Russian, it is not so shocking. What surprises the most is when big Western companies ignore all the facts and keep pushing Atomic Heart. Sony is planning to release the game on PlayStation and Microsoft already put Atomic Heart in a Game Pass for Xbox from day one. The latter means Microsoft already pledged to pay considerable money to Montfish and we have a slight idea where this money will eventually go. Microsoft, Sony and other Western publishers cooperate with a game dev company that silently supports the war in Ukraine, takes funds from Russian oligarchs and makes money for Russian budget. 
and also bans everybody who has complaints about these facts. During this time, Ukrainian game developers are working on the Russian shellings and even dying on front lines defending their country from soldiers supported by monfish, as it happened to stalker developer Volodymyr Yezhov. I know it might sound fishy, but if you want to play Atomic Heart, it actually equals support of the war against Ukraine. It is not about the game, it is about people's lives. There are a lot of cool games that don't have a smell of Putin's ass, and you can't pick any of them. And while you really, really shouldn't be baited by those sexy communist robots, what you should do instead is subscribe to our channel, press like, and I don't know, maybe even donate us, because we make good videos.